Hello everyone, I'm Nidhi Johnny, Wireless LAN Technical Marketing Engineer, and this is part 2 of Personal Air Group video, which includes its configuration and demo. If you have not seen part 1 of the video, which includes use case and operation, it is highly recommended to watch it to get a better understanding of the feature and how it works. So in this video, we will be looking into the prerequisites for enabling personal device visibility and sharing feature. We will be configuring an MPSK SSID with CloudAuth. Then we will see how to configure CloudAuth with an external identity provider. And then we will enable personal device visibility and sharing feature in HPE Aruba Networking Central. Finally, after configuring all this, we will see a demo of the feature. In the demo, we will learn how to use the Cloud Guest Portal to generate MPSK for our personal devices, how to share personal devices, and also we will see how to manually change a personal device to a public device. So let's look at the prerequisites that we need to note before enabling personal device visibility and sharing feature. First of all, we need to ensure that there is an AOS 10 group available and the APs need to be on AOS version 10.6 or above. For device sharing, we need an MPSK SSID enabled with CloudAuth. A user access policy needs to be set up in CloudAuth with an external identity provider like Google Workspace or Microsoft Entra ID or Okta Workforce Identity. In the current phase, only MPSK SSID device owners can share their devices and the Aruba CloudAuth serves as the supported authentication server for the MPSK SSID. So I already have an AOS 10 group and I have an AP505 added to it running firmware 10.6. Now, as mentioned previously, for sharing personal devices, we need to have an MPSK SSID enabled with CloudAuth. Let's see how to configure that. So go to your AP group, click on Devices, click on Config, select the WLANs tab, click Add SSID to create a new SSID, Give the SSID a name, let's call it students. Click on next. Client VLAN assignment is set to static. VLAN ID I will give 40 here. Now click on next. Key management we have to select MPSK AES. Under primary server, select cloud auth. Then click next. Access rules. Let's leave it as unrestricted. Click next to view the configuration summary and then click finish to save. All right, now our MPSK SSID is created successfully. Now let's configure CloudAuth in Central. Go to Global Context, click on Security. Select Authentication and Policy. Click on Config. Now we need to create a user access policy to authenticate clients using MPSK and control their access to the network. So click on Edit. Now here we need to select our identity provider. The following identity providers are supported. That is Google Workspace, Microsoft Enter ID and Okta Workforce Identity Cloud. Now in this video, I will be using Okta Workforce Identity Cloud, so select that. We need to fill in these information, Okta Domain, Client ID, Client Secret, Service Client ID, Service Client Secret. This info can be obtained from your IDP portal. Also, you can click on this quick start guide, which lists the steps to get this information from your IDP. It also includes the steps to configure your IDP with CloudAuth. All right. So fill in this information from your IDP. Then click on connect. And it's connected successfully. Now here you can configure user groups to client role mapping. I don't have any user group, so I will leave it as unspecified. Client tag, I will leave it as any. Client role we need to change from deny to the role you want. I'm going to select the student role. So the user access policy is configured with IDP now. Now click on manage MPSK. Click on new configuration to create a MPSK network. 
Select the MPSK SSID we created. Click on Save. Now you can see we have the URL for the MPSK password portal here. We can copy this URL and distribute it to the personal device owner. So users can go to this portal to generate their PSKs and connect their personal devices. We will see how this is done in the demo. Alright, so now we have the MPSK SSID enabled with CloudAuth. Let's go ahead and enable the personal device visibility and sharing feature. So to enable personal air group in HP Aruba Networking Central, we need to go to Global Context. Click on Applications. Click on Air Group. Then click on Config to the right. Here you can see that I have already enabled Air Group for Google Cast Service and Dial Service. We will need these Air Group services for our demo. Now select Servers. Here you can see the Personal Device Visibility and Sharing feature. Toggle the button to enable the feature. Now the feature is enabled. At the bottom you can see usernames associated with public server. Here you will see all the personal servers with their usernames that were manually converted as public servers. Alright, so we have enabled personal device visibility and sharing feature in Central. Now let's see a demo to see the feature in action. Here is the demo setup we are using. We have an AP505 connected to a 2930F switch connected to a 9004 gateway. The gateway is connected to the internet via ISP and all the devices have internet access. The AP will be broadcasting the MPSK SSID that we have configured. Now consider the dorm room scenario in a college where we have two students, student A and student B. Student A has two personal devices, a Google TV and an iPad. Student B has one personal device that is his Android smartphone. All these devices will connect to the student's SSID. Consider this is the Wi-Fi network available in the dorm rooms. So the Google TV and iPad will be associated with username student A at xyzuniversity.com. The Android smartphone will be associated with username student B at xyzuniversity.com. So with personal air group enabled, Google TV will be visible only to student A's iPad. Student B's Android phone will not be able to discover it for casting. Alright, so let's go ahead and connect Student A's personal devices. Firstly, Student A needs to log in to the Cloud Guest portal and generate his pre-shared key. So on the iPad, I log in using Student A's credentials. Student A at xyzuniversity.com and type in the password. So here you can see the generated pre-shared key. This is the Cloud Guest portal. You also have an option to regenerate the pre-shared key here. All right, so now we have generated the pre-shared key for student A. Now using this pre-shared key, student A can connect his Google TV. So let's go ahead and connect the TV now. Type in the pre-shared key that we had generated. And it's connecting. And it's connected. Next, I will connect the iPad also to the student's SSID using the same pre-shared key we had generated. So look for the student's SSID. Type in the pre-shared key that we had generated. and it's connected. Now similarly, student B can generate his pre-shared key using the portal and connect his personal devices. So on the Android phone, go to the portal, log in with student B's credentials. All right, so we have generated student B's pre-shared key. Let's connect the phone to the network using this pre-shared key. So look for the student's SSID, type in the pre-shared key. And it's connected. So all three devices are now connected to the student's SSID.
Let's verify this in central. So go to global context. Click on client. So here you can see all the three devices are connected to the student SSID. You can see the two devices connected with username student A at xyzuniversity.com. And the other is connected with username student B at xyzuniversity.com. So the devices are associated with their owner's usernames. Now, if we go to applications, A group, under list view. So under servers, we can see that Google TV is showing up here. You can see the username associated with it. It belongs to student A and it is a personal device. So the TV is a personal device and it can only be visible to its device owner, that is student A. So let's verify this from student A's iPad. On the iPad, let's open YouTube and click on this CAS button. You can see that the Google TV is listed here. So the TV is visible to student A. We can click on this and the iPad will connect to the Google TV. Let's try the same from student B's Android phone. Open YouTube and click on the cast button. Here you can see that it is searching, but it cannot find the Google TV. It'll just keep on searching, but it will not get a response from the AP. So this is because we have personal air group enabled. So the Google TV, which is a personal device is only discoverable to its owner that is logged in from the iPad. All right, now let's see how student A can share his personal device with student B. So student A can go to the cloud guest portal, log in with his credentials. At the bottom, you can see manage my devices option. Click on it. Here you can see the list of personal devices. Google TV is showing up as his personal device. It's showing up as Android. So to share the TV, click on edit. Search for the user to share it with. And click on save. And that's it. Now the TV is shared with student B. So he will be able to discover it from his phone. Let's check that now. So go to YouTube. Click on cast. And there it is. You can see the TV now. So student B can cast anything from his Android phone now since the Google TV has been shared by student A. Now, in case you want to make the TV public, we can do that as well. You can manually add a personal device as a public device. To do that, click on applications. Click on air group. Under list view, click on servers. Here you can see the Google TV with its username. At the right, you can click on this plus sign to add this device to the public server list. Now you can see here, the username is showing under the public server list. Once the device is made public, it will be visible to all other devices in the network, which are in the same RF neighborhood. And that concludes this video on personal device visibility and sharing. Hope this video was helpful. Thank you for watching.